yeah, my mom was always drinking Bud when I was growing up, and I drank it. I was like, oh, I don't know about yeah. all this. And I had a Heineken for the first time. I was like, oh, this is beer. This is yeah. gross. I don't uh-huh. want any part of this either. Yeah. And I think later it was like Fat Tire, Shiner, and I was like, okay, this I can get yeah. into. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't uh, locally though. I mean, it was. It started with imports, right? Yeah. So your Pilsner, Kell, your, um, and I think I think my, the first beer I ever bought. When I turned 21, was a uh, Newcastle Brown Ale. Ooh, nice. Um, and then, yeah, so they, it, oh, it started with imports, and it wasn't till around I'd say probably um, I don't know, I don't even remember. Probably like 2003, 2002, maybe three, four, um, when we started to see sort of it was like there was a craft beer bar that opened in Denton. Mm. Um, I went to school in Denton, so there was a it was like a music venue slash craft beer bar. I still remember exactly. the place. I don't even I don't think it's still there. It was called Haley's. Um, oh, I remember Haley's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that, yeah they yeah. had like 50 they had the taps. pillars and yeah, the ceiling was real low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. had like fifty taps on the wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember going there and drinking Flying Dog Pale Ale mm. and thinking it was fantastic. So. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny to think about, like, all the places as you get older. When you're younger, it's not a thing you can really think about. But as you get older, you're like, oh, man, these places I've used to go to that aren't even there. Yeah, anymore, Like, don't yeah. even exist. Like, something like this is probably in the place of where, that you know, different places used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all just, absolutely. This is all just fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this is going to be hard. Sure. Top three favorite beers y'all have made here. Here? Yeah. Um, man, you catch me on a day, and it's like, well, we have one right yeah. now, right? You know, it's, uh, but ultimately, uh, I'd say opulence is definitely up there. Okay. Um, this new pre-prohibition Pilsner that we've got on right now, um, I always change my mind. I would, I'm always <laughs> like, this beer is the, the greatest one that we've made so far, um, but I always change my mind. Um, that one is really good. And then, as far as the third one goes, I don't have one. I don't. I can't think of a third. I, 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 they're all like equal to me. Yeah. Right? It's like making you choose your own kids. Yeah, right? I mean, like, that's that, that's why I know it's gonna be hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, definitely those two. Um, Woodpecker Lips is probably up there too, um, especially the barrel aged version. So uh, that's our scotchy. Nice. Mm-hmm. Now, is the pre per Pre-prohibition Pilsner is that the name or is that the no, style? No, that's the style. Now, what is so what is it about that style that is different? I guess from post-prohibition. Yeah, so uh, I guess the idea behind the pre-prohibition style is that um, prior to prohibition, when the German brewers came to the U.S. Um, from Europe, they got here and still wanted to make beer. Of course, um, but they had to adapt and use American ingredients. Uh, um, so it is a sort of a German style beer but with American ingredients. So ours okay. uses corn um, and it also uses um, cluster hops, uh, which are one of the oldest known varieties in the U.S. Wow. When it comes to hops. Very so, cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure somebody's screaming into their radio right now is like, why, why do you not know that? Like, <laughs> we don't can't know everything, no, so okay. that's why I'm asking. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, and tech, I, think, I think traditionally uh, the style is probably a little bit higher ABV, around 5-6%. Okay. Uh, but we've, we've tended to sort of skew towards the lower ABV range on our loggers because we just want to be able to have more than one. Like, of course. Just kind of, yeah. yeah, just for it to be drinkable. So this one comes in at 4%. So. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, lagers, they don't need to be super yeah. high percent. I guarantee we're going to get to the point where somebody's barrel-aging lagers, and they're, like, up to, like, the 18, 19 percent. <laughs> but for right now, it's good to just keep them yeah. where they are. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if somebody were walking in here right now, never had your beers, what flight would you give them? Uh, I mean, it depends, right? Again, it all goes back to which part of your beer journey are you on, right? Ah. Because the last thing I try to do is... Um, force styles on the people, right? Good point. So it's it's more about, you know, what type of beer you're drinking at the time, right? So maybe you might you might have 
just gotten into IPAs, right? But you hadn't hit the stouts yet, so maybe <laughs> you're not ready for that, or, or you just don't want it, right? Or you're not a sour person, or maybe you're just a sour person, and if you're just a sour person, then maybe you might like to try some of these um, hazy IPAs that they're not sour, but they definitely have more fruity notes to it, right? So it, it really depends on the person and where they're at, right? Because um, everything is different. Um, and if you're if you just if you come in and you're like I only drink Bud Light, what do you got? <laughs> it's like, well, okay, I can I can help you out here, and you yeah. just kind of give them a flight. I, I would I would give them a flight of, of our lighter beers. Um, they're all different, right? They're subtle. There's subtle nuances between each one that makes them different, one different than the other. Uh, we did have an untapped review uh, recently where somebody got a flight of all of our loggers, yeah. and gave every single one of them I think like a one star because he said they, they he said they all tasted the same it was all the same somehow he got bamboozled <laughs> and got the same beer four times so <laughs> um, I think that's funny because yeah yeah that's the thing with untapped it's like um, I've talked to so many people different people now about it and it's like you can either be very helpful with your reviews as to you give it let's say four and a half five stars whatever yeah. or even if they give a one star this is why I liked it this is why I didn't like it yeah. whatever then there's people like me who do it as like a Pokemon game where I want to collect them all yeah. I try things that I haven't checked off Actually, and yes. I won't write a review but I'll just put like the star rating yeah. because well, now that next I time. think about it, it wasn't untapped. It was, oh. a, it was a Google review. Oh, that's even worse. And, even worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, one-star Google review. Uh, and that's what it was. That's where I saw it. I was trying to think, where did I see that? Yeah, yeah. it was a one-star Google review, and he had a picture of his flight, and he, said, <laughs> and he got all the same beer. I looked at which beers he picked, and yeah, they're all very similar, but they're all different. Of course, so. yeah. <laughs> now, you guys aren't, a, uh, aren't official on Untapped. Is there a reason for that? Uh, because of the, the review situation? No, or is not it just at all. Um, I'm not, I, honestly, I don't even know what that means to be official Oh, on okay. Um, it might mean that you have to pay for it. And you do have case, to pay for it from what I hear, but you can then also put what is on tap. Yeah. And then you could put what your beers to go are. Um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I just haven't. Oh, okay. It's just not been, it's just true. not been anything that, um, I think we've gotten, you know, I think Untapped's reached out to us to, to that's try good. to, you know, um, like there's a rep that they have that tries to, you know, get you on board with it. I just, it's not anything that we've thought necessary to pay for up till now. Uh, I mean, yeah. so we'll see. Maybe that'll change. Okay. So. Well, don't give him the commission. <laughs> give me the commission. I'll just take beer. It's fine. Um, I'm not trying to get you in trouble, mm -hmm. but top five favorite, in no order, uh -huh. DFW breweries. Oh man, that's a lot. I know. That's, a, that's what I'm saying because there's like 80 something. Yeah, that is a lot. Of I mean, the Metroplex breweries. is not getting smaller. We can kind of argue that it goes all the way out from Weatherford to Rockwall, yeah. Sherman somehow, and oh, then man. Waco at some point will be part of North Texas. So. Oh, um, man, that's a, that's a that's a tough one because there's so many out there. Well, I guess you could just uh, name some that have really helped you guys out when it came to you guys yeah. opening and then throughout the time and then maybe some you have also helped out. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I, I guess, well, yeah. So recently, <laughs> uh, we literally last week just did a um, uh, collab with Vector. It's our awesome. second one that we've done with them, right? So we've done two at their place now and two at our place, so... It's been it's been a lot of fun, right? So we have a really really good relationship with those dudes. They're good um, dudes. Too. Yeah, there's so much fun. Yeah. To, there's so much fun to hang out with. Uh, so yeah, that that's been that's been a super solid relationship, and we love drinking their beers. Yeah. Um, it's always awesome when when they come over because you know they'll bring a case of beer, and then we get to <laughs> we get to enjoy all the cool stuff that they're doing over there. Um, yeah, they came over last week and uh, we brewed uh, an oyster stout. Oh, so, yeah. That was probably we probably should have done that on a Friday. We did that on a Thursday. Uh -oh. um, yeah, Friday. Yeah, was, Friday. Yeah, was Friday, Friday, Friday was rough. <laughs> Friday was really rough. What um, goes into an oyster stout? Because I was going to talk to somebody. Got that. <laughs> I was going to talk to somebody in California, but unfortunately, my schedule didn't yeah. work out, and they have an oyster stout. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious about oyster stouts. Yeah, I've had enough of them now going to New Orleans as much as I do. Yeah, so. yeah, oysters or oyster stouts? Oysters, okay. not oyster yeah. stouts. Yeah, not yet. 
Yeah, so we actually we used uh, Texas Gulf oysters, oh. um, and so the the I guess the idea behind, from what I understand, the way oyster stouts became about, is that um, way back in the day, um, when people were drinking Guinness um, in Ireland, um, it was people would go to the pub and they'd order a Guinness and an oyster. And it's kind of like, kind of like a, I guess like a, like a beer and a shot or something like okay. that, right? And so you have your beer and you have your oyster. Um, but because oysters were cheap, and because um, I think at the time Guinness was relatively cheap, yeah. um, so they, that's that's that was a thing. And so then it became a thing, I guess, in the pubs over there, where you'd have a beer and an oyster. Yeah. Um, and then Guinness even started, you know, sort of promoting. Uh, beers and oysters, so they have uh-huh. they have you know marketing with yeah. with a, a Guinness and then an oyster next to it. That's cool. Um, and then I guess eventually people just blended the two together. Um, why not put yeah. the oyster in the beer <laughs> and you can save yourself a step. Uh, so uh, I guess that's where it originated. So the idea is I don't know I'm sure you've had a Guinness, but yeah. uh, Guinness is super super light. Like people always yeah people, yeah people always refer to Guinness as like mortar oil or, or yeah. something like that. But but it's, it's actually a super light beer. It's, it's like, closer to a porter than it really is stout. Yeah, really. it's like four and a half percent. Yeah, or something stupid like that. Um, so it's not not heavy. Um, it's super light and and, and pretty thin. Um, so that's kind of what we were going for. Not a Guinness, but like a, a sort of um, quote-unquote sessionable stout. Um, it was a little bit lighter and not as sweet. So it's definitely a dry stout. Yeah. Um, I was actually just tasting it earlier today, and uh, it's tasting pretty good. So it was just brewed five days ago, so it's very mature, or it's not yet mature. Um, so it still has some time to go, but... Um, it's tasting really good. It's dry, it's a little chocolatey, um, a little bit roast on the back, and then if you look for it, you get a little bit of that minerality on the back end. So um, we used probably, I want to say about 175 total, when it was all said and done, uh, oysters. Wow. Um, so yeah, we used about 100 shells, so cool. 100, or 100 Did you half shells. you shuck them all yourselves? Uh, so, 100 half shells, so okay. that's 50 oysters. We shucked all those. Um, we shucked those, and then we put the shells in the boil. And then um, about 100, we 100 to 125, we threw in whole into the boil. Um, the idea with that is that um, as they boil and they cook, the yeah. shell opens up a little bit, and the brine seeps out of the oyster. Um, so when huh. you take them out... They're not, they're not totally open-faced, right? But yeah. they're cracked open to the point where you can just kind of pull the shell apart. Um, so yeah, yeah, we took uh, the first, the first 50 that we shucked. Um, we ate some raw, then we saved some and uh, grilled them on the shells that came out of the boil. Very nice. Um, and then the ones that came out of the boil, uh, we took those out and, and soaked them in butter and ate those too so there's a lot of oysters so is this going to be available here or there it'll be available here okay yeah yeah and then i mean it was such a fun day i think we're already talking about doing another type of oyster beer over there yeah so i'm very curious do we have a actual like rough date date? yeah not yet okay not yet it's still please let me know later and i would love to try that yeah absolutely i imagine you guys will also probably have oysters here on site for the um you know i had not thought about oh okay um we don't have a kitchen or anything like that so uh i'm trying to think if there's a tree i guarantee there's somebody who does a food truck like oh with oysters maybe ah, that's not a bad idea yeah i'll have to look into that that'd be fun be a fun. Glad I could give you some <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, so Vector, uh, who else uh, would be on your list? Of I mean, there's, to... there's so many, right? Um, we do a lot of stuff with False Idol too. We've had we've yeah. done two collabs with False Idol already. Um, I love what they and Turning Point have done with that area. No one went over there. Like, for no offense to like NRH two O, yeah, yeah, but there was and TCC, but there yeah. was no real reason to go to like. Bedford, North Richland Hills, yeah. whatever. Like, unless you were going, just happened to pass through or whatever, or you lived in that area. Yeah. They have made people go to North Richland Hills and Bedford 
yeah, for no their kidding. amazing exactly. beers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, they're doing they're doing a lot of good stuff over there. Yeah, um, and Brutal is collecting all the. Hey, there's also another brewery over here. Yeah, so, for sure. And they're doing good things too. Yeah, they're just absolutely. you know, unfortunately, stuck between yeah. false idol turning point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's all about you know the. Death.